All right. Good morning and welcome to our Blueprint training. My name is John Brooks. I'm a Pro 6 coming you from a, to you from a rainy Sioux Falls, South Dakota today. Um, we have a fantastic training with some amazing leaders. Um, we have some people that are going to speak this morning is we have uh, Pro 6, Dr. Melody Rodardi. She's going to talk about how to talk to doctors and how to resolve concerns. We have Pro 7, Joanne Shearparkin, who's going to talk about telling your story, the product story, and the company story. We've got Pro 7, Tanya Sheldon, who's going to talk about the close and the follow-up. And then we have Maria Williams, Pro 9, who's going to talk about inviting and taking massive action. Okay, a little bit about me and my story. I'm married to my, my incredible wife, Sandy. Uh, it's going to be 19 years in May. Um, she's uh, the fixture behind everything, so she takes care of everything behind the scenes so I can be out building and, and building our business and helping things. Um, we have one kid, which is Roxy, which is our long coat German Shepherd. So that's the Brooks team right there. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, my background is in media and advertising. I have a uh, mass communications degree, a BA in, uh, from the University of Sioux Falls, and I've been in the advertising industry for over 25 years. Kind of how my story leads into Life Vantage. In 2004, um, I began work at my present job. I was absolutely super blessed. Everything worked out really good. I had a good boss who said, what do you need from me? Crazy ideas. And... Uh, in four years, I was able to almost double annual revenues of uh, an organization that's been around for 126 years. And so everything is going good, fantastic. I'm, I, I was the top person in the nation a couple times um, in political sales. But the thing that happened was in 2008 and 2009, if you guys remember, there was a recession. And it was a very serious gut check emotional time in my life because I had added millions of dollars of new accounts and new business to this job. Everything was going good. And then, as you know, in a recession, things a lot of times go really bad because people don't buy advertising and things really slow down. And so it was, you know, it was kind of smoke and mirrors. Like, wow, it really was kind of, you know, a lot of times in life, sometimes a bad thing at the time, it seems like a really bad thing. But in hindsight, there's a silver lining. It was really, really a good thing. And the reason why it was a good thing was, it really made me realize that, guess what? Get something for yourself because, I mean, you know, here's all these accounts. Here's all this business at this job. And if I leave the threshold, all that business, all that effort, all those accounts are staying on that side of the threshold. Okay, I don't have anything residually, anything from it. So it's like major gut check. Guess what? Emotional, scary time. Get something for yourself. Don't wait till you're thirsty to dig the well. And so... The crazy thing about that was it, it really made me super receptive to when Life Vantage approached me, I was ready. I was ready to listen, okay? And so as a selling sales manager, you know, it really made me think about that plan B. And so in 2011, I, had, uh, I received a call from a client of mine who was a U.S. Senate candidate who had worked with me with his campaign media when he ran for U.S. Senate. And so after politics. We did a few other projects and got to be friends and stayed in touch. And so I got a call from him and he said, Hey, I have a project because we've done some other things together. So I drove six hours across the state and uh, he lives in the Black Hill. I live in Sioux Falls. And so he's a very stern guy. So if you, if you get to meet him, he's like right in your face and he's real serious. And so about halfway through the, the dinner, he said, Hey, there's something under the radar. Nobody knows about this and it's going to change health as we know it. And we're first in. That was my ABC primetime investigative report. You know, not really duplicatable, but I was excited. Okay, and so next day, I drove home six hours back across the state, and we're talking on the cell phone on the way home. And he said, by the way, my business partners live in Sioux Falls, where you live. I said, this is great. So it's easy access to get more information. And so when he said they live in Sioux Falls, it was not only did they live in Sioux Falls, but they live seven houses up the street on the same street that I lived in. One was a cardiologist, Dr. Mark and Pam Gordon. So that's how I tied into the whole thing. I, I didn't know them, but uh, you know, could have saved seven, six hours driving if I did. But, uh, but that's kind of funny how things work out. But it's amazing. Life Vantage has been, I, I'm going to say the third best decision of my life. It's got to be God, Sandy, and Life Vantage in that order. And uh, it's just been amazing blessing for our life. Um, 
some of the big emotional things for me when I saw, you know, talking about my why, I'm going to talk about the why this morning. And it was, you know, more time with my family. We wanted to help our retirement. I wanted to develop a, a, a financial safety net for my family because if something happened to me on the road or something happened to Sandy, Sandy works for the, for the U.S. government. And as you know, nowadays the government shuts down. And so it's really cool to be able to have that, you know, have that financial safety net in case something happened, we don't have to worry. We're going to be okay financially. So the why I'm going to talk about that. It's, it's one of the most important things that's going to help your business. Okay. It's going to be, I like to put like, like Herbert Harris says, it's one of the, it's your bazooka proof armor when the challenges come and it's really the wind beneath your back when on a daily, on a daily basis when you're building the business. Okay. And, um, you could have a brand new sports car in your driveway, but if you don't put gas in it, it could be it could be the fastest car out there. It could be the best looking car, but if you don't put gas in it, it's not going to go anywhere. It's the same thing with your business with the why. Okay, Ben Franklin talked about it over two hundred years ago. He said, "People are walking around dead." He said, "You know, there's no dreams, no vision will bury them when their body stops, but they're just walking around dead." And so, kind of with the why. So many people kind of have their whys beat out of them. You know, they work at a job. I found that the more I showed this business to people, I found that a lot of people not necessarily like their job, not necessarily like the income they're making, and they definitely didn't have the time to do the things they wanted in life. And so we really have a major solution to, to bless people, to let them know what they can do, what they can have, and this is the vehicle that will help you do it. Carrie Dickey said it, I mean, summed it up perfectly. She said, your why should make you cry, okay? And when you think about that, that's, that's pretty important, okay? So it, it really gives us a good guideline to when you work with your new distributors and people are starting and you help people develop what their why is and get them thinking about it, you need to ask a lot of questions, okay? Ask them what they don't like about their life, what they don't like about, you know, what time in the morning do you get up? You know, do you get up at 5.30? What would you prefer to get up to? Maybe you like to wait till you're done sleeping to get up. You know, or, you know, ask them what they would change. You know, what are the things that, you know, if they have debt, talk to them about, you know, let's, let's, how much debt do you have? You know, let's look at that. And, you know, there's, there's tools in the business, like the earnings claim statement. You can show how much money the different distributors make, the ranks. That's a huge tool. Okay. Ask them, all, you know, really peel the onion. That's what I found has been the most successful. <laughs> People do that. Okay. And just ask them how their life would be different. Ask them that. You know, what, what if your spouse came home from work and you said, honey, we need to sit down. And you sit down and say, guess what? You need to take these days off vacation. And she says, why? It's like, guess what? I have two tickets now. It's cold in South Dakota. We're going to Florida. You know, and just to be able to do some of those fun things like that, you know, it gets people really thinking, gets them out of where they are right now and gets that vision of going. Because when obstacles come, you know, there's going to be people, and believe it or not, there's going to be people in your life that are not going to be excited about your dreams or excited about your business. And so when stuff like that happens, you know, vision of what you want. To do in life, okay, I'm going. That's going to, that's going to really help you. Okay. Also, <laughs> no, it's dangerous. <laughs> ask them about their, you know, if they had their four. John, sorry, I had to mute you because someone was on there. So unmute yourself. Okay. You know, I also ask them about, you know, what would you do if you, if you had your 40 hours back a week? What would, what would you do? You know, when you wake up in the morning, would you, would you and your wife go to breakfast? You and your wife go out for a walk? Would you, you know, if your wife likes to go to a yoga class or, you know, like with me, I go, I'm at the gym early in the morning and it's like, you know, I look, I want to get those last two sets in, but it's like, ugh, I got to get, Get, get home and get the monkey suit on and get out on the road, you know? So it's like that time is huge. You know, ask where you would go, ask where you'd go for vacation. What would you do with that extra time and money? You know, the big thing with me is my wife and I always wanted to go to Italy. It was a big deal. We never watch like the movie Gladiator. And we said, someday we're going to stand in the Coliseum. And it's like, you know, before Life Vantage, you know, a few years ago, we won the incentive trip and here we're standing in the Coliseum. You know, it's like, wow, this is really, really cool. So this works. It is so true. You got to really help people realize that. 
The other thing is you got to have fun. If you're not having fun, you're not doing the business right. If you get too serious and too bare down on things, you got to have fun. You got to be yourself. You know, imagine that last day at work when you're carrying your box of stuff out on that last day. You know, you cleared out your cubicle or your office and you're walking out and just that, just to visualize that, that feeling when you walk out the threshold of that business. It's like, wow, I'm done. I, you know, now I'm on the, the six, six Saturdays and one Sunday work week program. You know, this sounds really cool. So think about things like that. And so I've had a lot of fun doing this when training distributors. And I mean, I've heard a lot of crazy stuff when you get people really having fun and thinking. I mean, I've had people say, well, my last day of work, he said, I like to run up. I like to go to my boss and put a giant crayon on his desk and say, color me gone. You know, I mean, when people, you know, that's kind of, we don't condone that, but just you hear funny things. You hear people getting, having fun again when they start dreaming and realizing what they can have when they develop their why. Okay. Um, there, there's just a million things. You know, imagine that you are an artist and guess what? You have a blank canvas and now this is your life. Okay. I'm going to design my life the rest of my life. I'm going to get up when I want. I'm going to spend time with who I want. Because a lot of times when you work for somebody else, you may have to work next to someone that if you had the choice, you probably wouldn't choose to, to work next to them. You know, you can spend time with who you want. I mean, just, just amazing things when you start peeling that onion and thinking about money and time and, and where you want it, okay? Um, when those obstacles come, this is the vision. This is the stuff that's going to help you because when someone, you know, laughs and says, well, Pertanum doesn't work, I mean, you, you can think, as this guy said, Pertanum doesn't work. I mean, he, he can't read. But, you know, it's like, it's not going to shoot you out of the saddle. It's not going to ruin your day. It's like, no, that's not going to stop me from getting, getting my why just because he said that. Okay, so, another th you know, the tool, one of the things I talked about, um, use the earnings claim statement. That's huge. And so when you, when you go through people, especially with debt, say, look at, all right, look at, you know, here are Pro 5, you know, you're making over $2,000 a month. You know, let's look how much money you have and get a game plan. Okay, the hardest thing about everything is getting it, making a decision because after that it's easy. Then you have to then you get a game plan and you do the work. You follow the system. So use the earnings claim statement. And another analogy, kind of using the why is, I'm an, a crazy avid outdoorsman. I love the I love uh, hunting and fishing and being outside. And so with my job, I'm driving across the state all the time and I'll see an ego or I'll see a pheasant or something and my heart's pumping peanut butter because like that's part of my why. It's like, you know, then I'm, I'm driving down the road and I'm thinking, hey, I am so glad I have that seven o'clock meeting before work tomorrow with that prospect or I have that Zoom this week. Maybe I can get two or three more Zooms in this week. It just keeps that daily reinforcement of why you're doing it and how important it is, okay? Um, there's, there's so many things as well, too, when you start peeling that onion. You know, a lot of times, too, just think about at Christmas time, if there is a family you know is hurting financially or they're having a hard time, wouldn't it be really cool to be able to take five crisp $100 bills, put it in a blank envelope and put it in their mailbox and just realize that, hey, guess what? This Christmas, they can get Christmas presents for their kids or they can actually make that trip across the state you know, to a family uh, Christmas dinner. When you make the decision to, to help your family and meet your needs, then you can help bless other people, which is just, we have such an opportunity with this, with this business and this opportunity, okay? Imagine leaving a $100 tip, going, going to a coffee shop with, with your spouse, get a couple of coffees and leave a $100 tip and just watch what happens. It's just, it's so exciting how you can bless other people. But give those analogies and talk to, talk to your distributors and just say, hey, Get them thinking because I found from one, you know, your why is like a fingerprint. Everyone's different. One fires up one person, the other person will say, I'd never do that. I would do this. I would, you know, help, I would help people or I would do this. Okay. So really peel the onion and spend the time to help them. And when you're doing this, you're the one writing down. You're the one with the paper and the pens and the, and the, the pen and the paper. They're talking. So you do it. You write it down so you have it and make sure it's done. Okay. To help them. You know, another thing is, what if the youth group at your church, you know, the, 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 the youth group van conked out and all of a sudden it's like you call up the youth pastor and say, guess what? Go down to the dealership. There's a brand new van waiting. It's taken care of. Don't even tell them what happened, who, who did it. It's just not now the kids have a safe transportation for their, for their, for their youth activities. You know, it's, there's so many cool things that you can do, but 
you really have to get get inside someone's head and realize, get them away from the daily negative things they may be dealing with now and get that vision of what they're going to do in the future and what they can do. Okay. And the bigger the why, I found it's going to help mold and make you as a leader. It's going to help make you a, a better person. And um, it's going to make you walk through the fire. It's going to make you do things that are uncomfortable because if you want that why bad enough, you're going to walk through things, you know, that, that are uncomfortable, which is going to make you a better leader. Okay. An early mentor of mine said, Hey, when you're uncomfortable, you win. Now I totally understand what he was talking about. Okay. Um, another example is, uh, about the why getting bigger. Say for example, your daughter is a girl scout. And you have to sell Girl Scout cookies and she has to go to 50 of your neighbors door to door, knock on the door, sell the cookies or whatever. So when you're thinking of that scenario, it's like, eh, I love my daughter, so I'm going to go do that. I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team and go with her and do that. But what if your daughter was missing? Okay, you would be you would be knocking on doors so fast. You would be you would be frantic. Have you seen my daughter? She's, you know, she's outside, you know, five minutes ago. You would be knocking on doors. You would be doing that same thing, only you wouldn't even be thinking about it. You would be unconscious. You'd be doing it because the why got bigger. The why got more important, okay? So that's just a little analogy. The why is paramount. It's a big deal, okay? Napoleon Hill said, what the mind can conceive, it can achieve, okay? So developing your why is really the ticket to a successful business. So our next speaker is Dr. Melody Radarde. And let me grab her CV here. Dr. Rodarte is an amazing lady, first of all. Uh, she is born and raised in Arizona. Uh, she's an Arizona State undergrad in biology, Midwestern University DO in 2002, internal medicine residency in Phoenix from 2002 to 2005, with her chief year, 2005 to 2006. She is a board certified internal medicine and obesity um, doc, certified in hyperbaric medicine, wound care, and, and medical aesthetics. She's been married for 20 years and with, a, and with 16 year old twins, okay? She chaired pharmacy teams at the hospital for five years and, and she's been named one of the top docs in Phoenix and she is an amazing doctor. Um, I got to know her, um, you know, especially last year when I spoke in Phoenix, I got to go and, and get to uh, have a lunch with her. She is an amazing lady. So take it away, Dr. Rodarte. Thank you so much, John. I thoroughly am enjoying this morning and being a part of this morning. And I'm going to kind of share my screen right now because uh, I put together a couple little slides here. Um, let's see if it'll come up here. And so um, my topic is going to be talking to medical professionals. I think that's pretty um, appropriate for, for me on a, a Saturday morning with you guys. And I'm going to first lead off with just kind of where um, John left off with the why. Like, why am I here this morning? Why am I doing this? I am so blessed that, uh, that I was introduced to this um, uh, just over four years ago. And... I was looking for something specifically to help my family, my son in particular, and we were looking at, at franchises because we wanted to know what our plan B was. So think about that, you guys. With medical professionals, we're looking for um, plan Bs also because in this day and age, we are not um, getting reimbursements like we used to. Um, it's very stressful, a uh, very stressful time for a lot of doctors and medical professionals. So they may be open to, um, you know, seeing what a side gig could look like. And I'm actually on a Facebook page where it's medical professionals and side gigs because people want to know what else is out there. And this might be surprising to you, but when I started practice in 2006 in primary care, my um, my uh, the, the partner that I joined actually told me you're gonna have to find something to bring in a cash flow because insurance is never going to pay your overhead um, that you know medical reimbursements are becoming slower and slower and so 
I am so excited that someone shared this with me over four and a half years ago because it has changed things and our why has changed. It initially was, you know, to help my son's health, help my family's health. And then I realized, wow, it's something that I could potentially retire my husband from. And we did that last year. And then we've been able to, you know, form a nonprofit organization this past uh, few months. And it just keeps growing. Our why keeps growing because I can see the potential of my, my little side gig here. So um, with that, I wanted to talk to you about how do we talk to medical professionals. Um, the first thing is really be informative, okay? Um, like all prospects, you want to give them information and you want to ask questions. Questions start that conversation. You want to listen and you want to ask questions. Some of the questions I wrote down for you guys that can be a little bit more specific is, um, do you know about NRF2? Because a lot of medical professionals may not know about NRF2. They might not even talk to you about oxidative stress because we honestly didn't, don't have a great answer for it until now, okay? So when they start learning about NRF2, they realize there is an answer to reducing oxidative stress. So it might not be something that they'll understand initially until you say, I might have an answer on how to reduce oxidative stress. Can I share that with you? Okay, it's that, that question of letting them say yes or no to that question. Um, you know, I pulled an article about my disease, you know, X, Y, and Z. Can I get your opinion on it? And you can show them that article then. Um, can you review this for me? So medical professionals, especially MDs and DOs, they want to be in control of, of the situation a lot of times, okay? So you want to ask it in a way that you're not belittling, you're not arguing, but you're coming from a stance of you've already done some research and you would like to have that team approach and that conversation with them. Um, and the nicest thing about most doctors is if you said, do you know about the NRF2 pathway? Most of them are, are going to probably say no. Uh, probably 99% of them right now are going to say no. And so it might, it's going to pique that interest where they'll be like, yeah, I'll, 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 you know, take that article from you and I'll show you one of the ones that I would present to them in a little bit. Be punctual, okay? Time is of the essence. Um, we don't have a lot of time. So if you are um, floundering or if you are you know, fidgeting through things, it's gonna be a, a way where they're gonna shut you down pretty quickly. So be punctual and, and, and have things very organized when you are going to present something to them. Be precise. Um, you, we have a beautiful team and a wonderful upline. Talk to them, have a conversation with them, practice the conversation with them so that you can be punctual, you can be informative, and you can have that posture that you're ready to speak with them um, regarding, you know, per tandem, regarding NRF2 activation, regarding mitochondrial health or the probiotic, you know, have, have your ducks in a row. And so some of the resources that I want all of you guys to have um, are listed here. So one, have the posture that we, we are um, peer reviewed and there is published data for us to present to medical professionals. Um, a wonderful website is PubMed. It's where the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of, uh, Institutes of Health, that's where all that peer reviewed and published data is. So it's www.pubmed.gov and you'll see a search line in there. You can type in ProTandem, you can type in, and I have some examples on the next slide, but that's where you can go to do that research. That is a great source of, re, uh, great resource for you. So those of you who are not medically inclined, another place to go, and this is great for your prospects who might look at PubMed and go, okay, it looks like Chinese. I have no idea what I'm looking at. You can have them go to Google Scholar. It's much better than any other type of, of um, search that they might do. So you can show them how to get onto Google Scholar. You can type in Google Scholar or you can do, do, do um, scholar.google.com and you can type in oxidative stress. You can type in NRF2. You can type in, you know, pro tandem. And, and that's a, a much better place for them to go to as well. But my favorite is, of course, PubMed, because I'll tell you as a physician, um, you know, when my patients would bring me, um, 
items that they wanted me to review, that was the first place that I would go to. Even starting back in 2005 and before, I would always tell my patients, one, I want to know what I, uh, medications you're taking and I want to know what over-the-counter items that you're taking because I wanted to know if there was anything that was going to cross-react with the medications and what they were using. And I would go to PubMed and I would type in those items. And, you know, it wasn't until four years ago that something had would would, would be on PubMed for me to look up. And that's what caught my eye. I was able to type in pro tandem and see those peer reviewed studies and go, oh my gosh, this is real. This is absolutely real. Because when I watched that ABC primetime investigative report, I said, what if? And I went home and I typed it into PubMed and I was just like, this is real. I have information to, uh, to review and, um, you know, the rest is history. So how do you search on PubMed? Again, I talked about typing in pro tandem. What you're going to notice right now is there's going to be 24 studies that pop up. If you do an extended uh, search, you're going to see three more studies. Um, don't even worry about that. The fact that you can print out a report of 24 studies is already going to be jaw dropping to a, uh, a, a medical professional. Okay. The other thing that you can do is you can type in NRF2. And so you're going to see that there are over 11,000 articles right now. And the neat thing about PubMed is on the right hand side, you're going to see a graph and you'll see how exponentially the number of research articles are coming up. So you could even print that graph and say, this is a pathway that is not going anywhere. That's how important it is. There are, you know, thousands of articles, you know, we're only um, three months into the, uh, you know, into the year and there are over 400 articles already you guys on nrf2 this is big this is why you know we are excited about sharing this if you type in nrf2 and oxidative stress you're going to see you know almost 7,000 articles there and then of course i always get the question of what do you think about disease x disease y disease z i always say go to pubmed Type in diabetes and oxidative stress. Type in arthritis and oxidative stress or NRF2. That's going to allow you to then be able to do that research or to show somebody, look, there is information that you can review here. And so we want to help them just connect the dots. Because remember, we're not made to, um, you know, to cure, treat, or mitigate disease. So you want to be able just to be to give them the information and let them make the conclusions. Super important for us to say to, to do that and stay um, stay safe. Um, and then with resolving concerns, just like any of your other prospects, they're going to have probably concerns and questions that you'll want to go over with them. So the biggest one might be there's no time. Have you ever heard that before when you're presenting this? And so, um, you know, you just talk about that, that it is uh, like everything else in life. You have to just see what your value system is and see where you might want to plug into it. For me and my family, we started to stick it in the nooks and the crannies. And when we realized that this was an, a very good uh, plan B, we started to put more time into it. I think most people are surprised when they hear that I have four jobs um, as, as a doctor. And I say yes, because I have a big why. My why is for me to be able to have one job ultimately. And so I am fitting it into my life. I'm doing an hour here or 15 minutes here. Um, and so that I can be presenting this to more and more prospects. One, because I truly believe in better health. Whether or not they do the business, it, it, I'm not attached to that. What I am attached to, though, is them having the opportunity to have their best health, to protect their genes, to reduce inflammation. So that time, pro that time problem is, is up to them to figure out where they might want to fit this in. And so you can tell them, you know, this is how I've seen other people, you know, put, um, put their effort into it. MLM or direct sales. 
For me, I had never heard of MLMs or direct sales before. So you might have to educate them. Ask them, what, what do you know about direct sales? What do you know about MLMs? So you can um, you know, answer professionally some of those questions. You are, again, listening to them. You proposed a question, and now you're offering some answers. I think what's incredibly important is that we are publicly traded and on NASDAQ. For me, I needed my financial advisor to one, explain how direct sales worked, and two, he needed to see what, it, what, what the type of company this was. So the fact that it was publicly traded and on NASDAQ was incredible, where he could say, this is a legit business. Um, and for me, now that I'm four years into it, I'm realizing that this is an incredible mode for people, an incredible side gig and then full-time job for those because it you work it into your life. You are the sheer owner of this. You are your own boss. And it's incredible what I have seen, especially with moms who want to stay home and grow a business outside of their home and raise their children. I mean, what a better gift than doing this. And with Life Vantage, it's with helping people's health. It's with a medical breakthrough. That is just incredible. And so with physicians and with medical professionals, you, you might have to explain it to them. They may have never you know, been introduced to direct sales before. So first ask the question, what do you know about it? And then you can actually explain what you do know now, right? That's, that's the key, having that dialect, having that education. Then they might ask, you know, what type of studies are out there? And so I'm going to tell you, there are human studies. There are lab studies where things are done on either cells in a Petri dish, you know. Um, there are scientific reviews with proteandum. The neat part is there are all of these types of studies. And when, if someone says, oh, there's not enough human studies, I want to tell you that, unfortunately, you don't want to start doing studies on, on humans. Our lives are incredibly expensive, okay? I would rather do something first on a mouse than on a human. And that's where a majority of research starts, in a Petri dish, in a lab, on a mouse. They are cheap. We can genetically modify them. We can watch what happens to them. And yes, they are an animal, but they are not a human. <laughs> and so I would rather something be researched first through all of those modes. And the neatest part is our first study, our first human study shows that we reduced oxidative stress by 40% in 30 days. And that's on the ABC primetime investigative report. And you can show that study as well. So when someone wants to talk about not having enough studies, I know that then they don't really truly understand this and there are other concerns that I need to talk to them about, or it just might not be their time where they're ready to listen to this information. And then the patents, the fact that we have so many domestic and international patents, you can present that. This is not going to be wall tandem or a Costco brand wall tandem, you know, whatever you can think of the name anytime soon. We have so many patents protecting this formulation that you can really hang your hat on that we are special, that we have something that's others are not going to have for a long time. And the fact that we have so many studies is also incredible. So all of these things, I want you to just build your posture on what we have to present. And then I, I get a lot of times the question of why isn't this FDA approved? So when something is FDA approved, unfortunately, it has to be attached to a disease state. So that's why you're seeing the two drugs, um, Tecfidera and Etavarone, are attached to either MS or ALS. You have to attach it to a disease state. Life Vantage from the beginning was not going to go down this, this road because they would have to pull it off the shelves, they'd have to pull it off the market, and then they'd have to enter studies where they have to specifically um, choose a disease state, whether it's diabetes or hypertension or arthritis. Like, and so they're not going to do that. Then we're, we're missing the boat with being able to help people now if we had to take it off the shelves. And so we are not going to go down the road of becoming FDA approved. Um, FDA approval is for medications. Yes, there are uh, 
herbals or vitamins that go down that road. But again, then they have to be linked to a specific disease. And so I'm personally glad we're not going down that road. But if you look at the manufacturing practices that ProTandem and Life Anage go through, we do very rigorous um, testing and we do it as if we were monitored by the FDA. And so that's incredibly important that you can talk to them about. And there is a YouTube video on how um, we we monitor our, our products before, during, and after um, production. So you can even show that to a prospect or a medical professional to show um, our, our quality control and how incredible and the steps that we go and that we don't do skip lots. You guys, that's incredible. And that medical professionals are very interested in that if we do any skip lots. So the fact that we don't, again, build that into having posture that we are an incredible company. So these are some of the items that I would um, bring or I would have prepared. One is definitely, definitely that ABC primetime investigator report still. It is so quick. It is so easy to watch. And the fact that, the, that John Quinones didn't debunk the company and they get to see his blood results is still incredible. It's going to spark interest. And if it doesn't spark interest, it might not be the time for them. They might, you know, I, I think someone has taught me, is it noon? You know, is it high, is it high time for them yet? And it might not. So you can bring it up at a another time. My favorite is the Washington State University when you're asking them specifically, do you know what NRF2 is? I like this because it's non-branded. It goes about all the processes that NRF2 does. It's very informative and it talks about how this is the most extraordinary therapeutic and most extraordinary uh, preventative medicine. Uh, uh, mechanism in, in medicine, pathway in medicine. Woo, we got tongue tied. Sorry, I got so excited about talking about this article. Um, it is incredible. I, uh, this is one that you yourself could read if you're not a medical professional and just learn about all of the, the processes that are affected by the NRF2 pathway. Incredible. You can print this one and you could take that one in. I think anybody would want to read through this and just um, you know uh, become educated on the pathway. The next one is the University of Colorado article called Oxidative Stress and Health and Disease. What I love about this one is there's a great graph in there. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm learning how to become more technically involved, um, but I don't know if you'll be able to see this. There's a beautiful graph on there, and it talks about sulforaphane, um, which is the extract out of broccoli. Um, it talks about tecfidera, um, uh, protandum is on there, and it shows um, just how potent we are according to the, uh, these other items. And so um, you can actually, you know, what I do, this is specifically what I do for um, my medical professionals, is I print the, the first page of um, the article just so they have the abstract that they can look at. And then on the back, I print the graph. And so it makes it super easy um, to, for me to, to show them that there is a PubMed article that and there's a graph that I can explain pretty quick that shows the fat therapeutic potential of the NRF2 um, pathway. And so that usually creates a little bit of a buzz where now they want to look at it. So super easy. You're not, you know, bringing in a stack of everything. You can also bring in a list of the PubMed articles like I was telling you. You go to PubMed.gov, type in ProTandem, and then print it, print it off. And also touch base with your upline. Some of us already have a list um, that we can share with you. Um, and so you can keep that, you know, uh, as a file and take that in, uh, take that in with you. Um, have a list of ingredients. A lot of you ask, you know, is this going to affect this drug or this drug? If you take a list of ingredients with you and just say, this is what I'd like to incorporate into, you know, um, my med, my my uh, my health and these are the ingredients and these are the milligrams a majority of doctors are going to say wow this is these are really sub therapeutic doses i don't think this is you know this is going to affect anything but again you're coming prepared is it okay for me to take turmeric is it okay to, for me to take you know ashwagandha you can go through that list with them also the product information sheet and the frequently asked questions in your back office these are incredible, you guys. They are professionally done for us. This company is 
awesome at putting together tools for us. So go to your library, print off the product information sheet, print off the frequently asked questions because it gives, it educates um, your prospect incredibly. And it's great for you to learn. So when I sign a new distributor, I tell them to go into that library and read all of on each product, the product information, the FAQ, because it teaches them how to ask questions, how to respond to questions. It's a, it's a really wonderful source. And then for some of you, I think bringing in the specific article is also beneficial. If you're wanting, let's say, you, you know, you have osteoarthritis. The beautiful part is you can print off that, that article when you type in protandum osteoarthritis, one pops up and you can say, you know, instead of using disease, you know, drug X, can I use protandum? Here is, you know, a, a beautiful article that I just read. Would you mind looking at it and giving me your opinion? You could also do that with, you know, with whatever. But the thing is you're coming prepared and you're not just saying, hey, I did a Google search and, you know, Google MD told me to do this. Don't do that. It's the first way of shutting down a medical professional, okay? But if you say, I did a PubMed search, I found this, can you look at it and review it for me? It, the, your posture and their posture is going to completely change because now you're going to have an educated discussion, okay? So those are my, um, my little uh, my tidbits. I hope they've been helpful. Um, and I just know that sometimes you might have to continue bringing it up. Medical professionals are just so short on their time, so you want to be cognizant of what time they have available to talk with you and um, be precise, be informative, and have a posture that you definitely have something you want them to learn about and you've done your research. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to John and just say thank you, thank you for letting me be a part of your Saturday morning training. All right. Thank you, Melody. Appreciate it. Awesome stuff as usual. Moving on with our trip blueprint training, we have Pro 7, Joanne Parkin Shear. And Joanne is going to talk about telling your story, telling the product story, and telling the company story. And a little bit about Joanne. She is an amazing lady. I've had so much fun in, in the Super market, kind of growing up in the business with her and her, and her awesome other half gym. She is the consummate professional. She knows her stuff, as you'll see in a few minutes here just like all the other people on, on our, our uh, webinar this morning, but Joanne's amazing. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Joanne Shear Parkin, MS, RDN, is a registered uh, dietitian and master level nutritionist with over 40 years of experience in multiple practice settings, including 15 years as a certified diabetes educator while employed as, as the director of nutritional services at a heart specialty hospital from 2000 to 2012, Joanne received several awards for recognition for, inner, for her innovation and creative nutrition programs. Joanne has held numerous leadership positions in the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which was instrumental in the development of the standards of practice for the dietetics uh, profession. Joanne is known as a trendsetter dietitian, having at the forefront of, new, of numerous trends in nutrition and dietetics. Um, Joanne is the creator of the Prairie Mediterranean Diet, the Heart Puzzle Eating Guide, and the Healthy Kitchen Cookbook. She was one of the first to, uh, to adopt the Mediterranean diet in a hospital setting and was a leader in promoting healthy hospital food. To this end, Joanne was quoted extensively in, the Wall, in a Wall Street Journal article as hospital food that won't make you sick. Joanne is now at the forefront of another trend in nutrition, which is nutrigenomics and NERF2 activation. In 2011, a cardiologist friend and mentor helped Joanne build a successful business bringing nutrigenomic products direct to the consumers. Joanne now has a large network of over 25,000 customers and independent distributors. Her business, JSP Global, is now expanding into over 20 foreign countries. So, wow, with that, I'm going to bring on. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. I hope you can see me okay and hear me. Great. All right. Um, thank you for that wonderful introduction, and I'm so excited to be here uh, today with all of you. Dr. Melody Rodarti, you were awesome. I think that the information about 
how to talk to medical professionals and what you shared has been something that uh, we've all been needing for a long time. So thank you very much. I'm bringing up, I have a little PowerPoint here. So I'm gonna bring up my PowerPoint real quickly here. And let me expand this and we'll get started here. There we go. All right. Okay, so um, today um, I'm going to be educating and teaching on how to tell your story and the company's story. So let's start, I'm going to start with first, let's talk a little bit about the company, uh, Life Vantage and the company's story. <clears throat> so let's start, let's go back to 2005. In 2005, um, Dr. Joe McCord, the formulator of Pertandem Nerf 2, published the first study. And the first study showed, and it was a human study, showed that Pertandem Nerf 2, one little pill a day, could lower oxidative stress by 40% in 30 days. So ABC News picked up the story, and they thought, well, this just sounds too good to be true. And what they did is they conducted a, a complete investigation, and they published a time-time investigative report, and I think probably all of you have seen that report. So after that report aired, the next month, received over $5 million in orders. Okay, so think about this. This is this little biotech company. They don't have a distribution system, a marketing system. They have no way to get the product to the consumer. And so it took them at least two years. And so finally, by 2007, the pretend landed in the, uh, in the shelves and 10,000 different retail stores. It was in CVS pharmacies, um, was in Walmart, uh, it was in, in GNCs. But by 2009, the sales were very dismal. The product was sitting on the shelf. Um, could somebody please mute their um, um, audio, please, your microphone? Thank you. <clears throat> so here we have the pretendum is sitting on the shelf and it's not selling. And there's a couple reasons why it was not selling. First of all, is that pretendum was sitting on the shelf with the antioxidant vitamins. Well, as you know, and if you're learning, and if you've been with us for a while, you know that pretendum is not an antioxidant. It's in a new category. It is a breakthrough in a new category of drugs and supplements called NRF2, NRF2 activators. It actually should have been sitting on its own shelf and had that label there, right? Nerf 2 activator. But the second reason was is that c consumers had forgotten about the ABC primetime um, or, um, you know, the vast majority of consumers had never ever seen it. So they had no idea that what th this was, that Pertanum Nerf 2, how special it was. I mean, the price point was around $50. Well, you know, you could buy vitamin C for eight. <laughs> you know, so obviously if somebody's looking for an antioxidant, they probably would not choose Pertanum Nerf 2. So 2009, the board of directors brought in a consultant and said, what are we going to do with this company? And the consultant said, you know, there's a story to tell. There's education, so much education required with this. This product would work so well in the person-to-person -person marketing model. And that's exactly what happened. They did a trial at first, but they found that just in six months, with a handful of distributors, they outsold the, all the retail stores 10 to 1. Well, it was a no-brainer that this was a good fit for our flagship product for Tandem Nerf 2. And as you can see that the growth just, just escalated, like it just shot up like from 4 million to 200 million overnight. The main thing to remember in this story, think about this. What most network marketing companies do is they form a company, they get, a, get some people together, they raise some capital, they go in search of a product or product line then to market. Well, with, with uh, Pertanum Nerf 2, it was entirely the opposite. We ended up in the, in the person to person marketing and direct sales because of the nature of our product. So just to get you up to date, like what's going on with Life Vantage today? Well, as Dr. Rodarte said, we are publicly traded on the NASDAQ. All of our financial reports are public. So you can go in and look at the reports. Every quarter we get a report from the, our CEO, Darren Jensen. And this last quarter, a report, my, my husband, Jim, he follows all the financials and um, he really looks at all of this in detail. He said this was the best revenue and growth in the history of Life Vantage in this particular quarterly 
growth. That was the best ever. So our company is now just really starting to grow. You can go to the, uh, the ticker LFVN. You can look at what's happening with the stock. It's really great. It's really good news what's going on with our stock. So we have this really amazing, solid company behind us. We have this amazing corporate leadership um, it's exemplary, 100 plus years of combined experience in network marketing. And this is one thing that I, I learned when I went to um, Elite Academies. And you get to see the corporate people. And, and I remember my first one, I was sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, there's this whole corporation of people. All these people are literally working for me to help me be successful in this business. So that's what we have with Life Vantage. And look where we're going. Our company is expanding globally at a huge rate. In fact, um, I think we're 21 countries. I can't keep track of exactly how many because we just opened Spain this month and I, we can't keep up with, with it because as you can see, Spain isn't even on one of the countries on the, on the screen there. So this is what you have with Life Vantage. You have an opportunity to, to build a global Global Corporation. The name of my business is uh, JSP Global LLC. All right. So that's my vision. See, that's where I'm going. And what you have is that you have the timing um, with you with Life Vantage. Um, you know, you look at that business S curve, the Drucker business S curve, which shows the path that all businesses go through in their growth. And uh, you can see where we are on that growth curve. Do you see that we are not yet at branding or critical mass? And But when we get there, that's when we're going to have momentum and this explosive growth. So you have an opportunity to take advantage of the timing. And we are still, we are, we're going to celebrate our 10th anniversary this year. And I can see, I've been with the company now eight years, so I can see where Life Vantage is going. And boy, am I excited. Okay, so that's our company story. So now I am going to shift gears and teach you about how to tell your story, which is your most effective tool in your network marketing tool chest, okay? So this is your most important tool. So I'm gonna start by telling my story. And this is how I start uh, my meetings when my presentation. So, um, I, my name is Joanne Shear Parkin. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I've had a fabulous 40 year career in nutrition and dietetics, and such a diverse career everything from working in public health nutrition to critical care nutrition support. I was a certified diabetes educator for 15 years. And so I've, I've really I've had this, like I said, a really great career. But in 2009, um, my husband of 32 years passed away unexpectedly unexpectedly from stage four brain cancer and it really rocked my world and even though we thought we had planned well and saved I found that I was two thousand dollars a month short in my retirement account and I was faced with the grim reality of working in my windowless offices office at the heart hospital in Sioux Falls South Dakota and I was thinking oh my gosh I'm never going to be able to retire maybe when I'm 80. Um, so that was really depressing me. I was a depressing thought, even with the loss of my husband, but also the thought of when would I ever be able to retire? But then in 2011, a cardiologist by the name of Dr. Mark Gordon stopped by my office and invited me to a Life Vantage presentation where I learned that our flagship product, Pertanum Nerf 2, lowered oxidative stress by 40% in 30 days. I was amazed. I knew that there was nothing out there that could do that, uh, could lower oxidative stress and have such a powerful impact. And I saw it immediately. I saw it as a breakthrough. So I signed up as a distributor mainly because I wanted to get out there and tell people, hey, you've got to know about this. So fast forward now, two years later, two years later, Life Vantage Income had replaced my salary at the hospital. And so I was able to walk out of my windowless office and into a newfound freedom. And then seven years ago, I met a widower at a country Western dance in South Dakota at Sioux Falls. And Jim Parkin and I now, we've been married for five years and he is a huge support. I love him so much. He just supports me so much in my business. We're having a blast. We have 
time and financial freedom that we can, you know, we're traveling the world literally. Um, and we are really enjoying the dream lifestyle. We live in a retirement community in Arizona where we play pickleball, we take dance lessons, and we, we are really truly living the dream. Okay, so that's my story. So telling your story, your story should move the listener to action. So we have a saying in network marketing, it's that facts tell, stories sell. So be relatable. And so when be, you, want, you want to be so relatable that people are going to think, okay, if, if this dietitian could do this, you know, who was a widow trying to do the, doing this all by herself, um, if she can do this, then maybe I can do it too. You want to ev em uh, evoke an emotion in the listener. And did you notice that when I was going through, I talked about, you know, the emotion of losing my husband, emotion of, you know, oh my gosh, I can't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to retire. Um, you know, so you want to be able to relate to that person. You know, you could either have a product or a business story. I, I really have more of actually a business story. Um, I don't have a big product story. Like so many people think that they have to have this amazing, fabulous product story before they can go out and share this with others. And of course, first of all, I, I saw the science and saw the scientific validation, seven studies published on PubMed. I mean, Dr. Rodarte just told you now there's 27. I was impressed when there were seven, you know? Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, we gotta, I gotta get this out to people. But you know, I always think of it like, okay, so I think of it like a, a pharmaceutical sales rep. Do you think the pharmaceutical sales reps have to have a product story? They have to trade the products themselves and have a story before they can go out and sell it, you know, sell it to the doctors? Absolutely not. It's all based on the science and the scientific validation of, the pro of their, their product. So, what you want to do now is to work on your story. You want to develop your story. Because again, this is the most powerful tool that you have. You want to connect with your upline or maybe even a sideline to develop your story. This is key, is to keep it short. Two minutes or less, right? Write it down. Practice, practice, practice. Tell it with ease, become confident, and be yourself. Okay, so what you want to do is just write it down, and then I get in front of the mirror. In fact, I practiced my story again this morning and timed it to make sure that I was going to stay within that two to two and a half minutes. Are, these are the key elements of the story. Your background, your career, what were you doing when you were introduced to Life Vantage? Um, mine, I was a you know, registered dietitian, you know, loving what I was doing, actually. I, like, not, you know, a lot of people just don't like their job. You know, they want out. To me, I was having, I was actually enjoying my career. And what did I not like about it? I didn't like the fact that I didn't have retirement income. I didn't have a big pension. You know, um, that was what I didn't like. And how did I get introduced to Life Vantage? Dr. Mark Gordon stopped in my office, invited me to a Life Vantage presentation. It changed my world. What moved me to take action? What was my why? Because my why was, oh my gosh, I've got to tell my girlfriends, my family, all about Protanum Nerf 2 because this is going to change their health. This is going to change the health of people. So where am I now in the process? Well, my why, well, I, I'm, I'm living the dream, right? I'm enjoying the journey. And how has life and it's changed my life? What has changed my life now? And I can tell you is that I'm looking actually at, at really bigger, bigger things um, in terms of leaving a legacy. You know, start, I know, starting a foundation, a nonprofit, where I can start, you know, donating sizable chunks of money to, um, you know, charitable organizations. You want to be specific. If it's not necessary to say, it's not, it's necessary not to say it. Let me say, let me go through that again. This is a Carrie Dickey quote. Um, if it's not necessary to say, it is necessary not to say it. In other words, be specific, get to the point. Okay, so you want to have it very concise. You want to include all those key elements, but be precise. So how can you get started with telling your story? Uh, and this is really, again, you, you have us develop that story and you, all, all of you out there have a story. So this is, 
uh, this is how you can get started. So you show the ABC prime time and you can go to biohackingyourbody.com and use that site, download it on your computer, uh, the ABC prime time investigative report, but download your computer to your cell phone. And then you tell your story. Then you sit back and then you ask questions. You know, what did you like about what you saw? Could you, could you see yourself taking this product? Could you see yourself sharing it on a scale of one to 10? What is your interest? And the minute that they ask a question, um, what you want to do is to have your upline, your mentor standing by uh, for a third party call for third party validation. If you don't have someone standing by, get them, invite them to a Zoom webinar or invite them to the Thursday night uh, opportunity calls that these, these opportunity presentations, these are given by all of some fabulous great leaders in our business. So we, you can invite them to that. Use the tools. If you're new in the business, what you want to do is you really want to know where do you go, where are the tools, and um, what, you know, what Zooms, what videos, what's going on in, um, that I can use for tools. And then use those. And remember this, you're the messenger, not the message. Uh, one mistake that I made, and I think most people make, is that you want to, you're excited. You want to just like, you know, you want to say, oh my gosh, I just found this amazing, great breakthrough in science. It's called Nerf 2 Activation, and it's going to lower your oxidative stress, and it's going to slow down your aging. And <laughs> Okay, so um, just, just remember, use your tools and use your upline when you're, you're getting started. But remember, tell your story. Okay, so here's your assignment. I have an assignment for you. Um, what you wanna do this week, you wanna write and practice your story. Write it down, practice your story. Remember, what, two minutes. Tell your story to five people and then ask for feedback. Was it too long? Was, or was it boring? Did it move you to action? How could I improve it? With that, I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, I think that I, that, that's all I have my, my part of the program here. So, uh, John, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Sounds great. Thanks, Joanne. Awesome as usual. Um, our next speaker on our all-star lineup this morning is Pro 7 Tanya Sheldon. And anybody that knows Tanya knows that she's got a heart that's bigger than a house. I mean, she is just the sweetest gal. She's an amazing leader. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit about her story. She's going to talk about the close follow-up this morning. Tanya Sheldon joined Life Vantage in October of 2011. She is a wife, a mother of three girls, and she is the first impressions coordinator at her church. Tanya has a background in retail management and was a stay-at-home mom when Life Vantage was introduced to her. She is no stranger to network marketing. Uh, prior to Life Vantage, um, she, uh, when she made Life Vantage her home, she, had, she tried several other companies. Her true passion lies in, in helping others discover their worth and living their best life. Tanya's family was forced to move due to a job relocation for her husband. She moved to a state and a city where she didn't know anyone, but built an elite Pro 7 business. Okay. With that, I'm going to bring on Pro 7 Tanya Sheldon. Hi, John. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm so excited to be here and just really honored to have been a part of this training with such amazing people. Everyone's done such an amazing job this morning. John's heart and the why, that's our foundation. Dr. Rodarte, how to approach doctors. We all want that, goods and information. And then Joanne, I could listen to your story all day long. It just makes me warm and fuzzy. So thank you guys. Um, when Maria asked me if I would train, I was like, yeah, okay. And then she's like, close and follow up. <laughs> I wanted to say, I take it back. Because <laughs> nobody likes the close and follow up, right? They're some of the hardest things to do. I don't enjoy them. And it's something I'm still perfecting all the time. Um, I have to also say, I'm going to bring up my slides here, but I have to just, I was laughing when um, Maria was talking about, we have such amazing, talented people on our team. And I thought about my slideshow and I'm like, I don't know, Maria, <laughs> you might take it back <laughs> when you see my slideshow. Um, it's really, really simple, but I made it for you because I know what it was like for me when I first got started. I would take notes like a crazy person. And when somebody would talk about an invite 
or a follow-up or anything that seemed like a script. I wanted it written down because I was scared to death. What I've since learned though, you guys, is the greatest asset you bring into this business is just you, your heart and your ability to listen. You really want to become skilled at being a really good listener and asking a lot of questions because that's gonna make this entire process so much easier when you get to the point where you are closing and you're following up with them. So the reminder first and foremost when you're doing the close and follow up is be unattached. Don't have any desperation in this process. Be unattached to the results and have posture and show leadership to your prospect. Even if you don't feel like you're a leader, they're going to see you that way because you're the one that's introducing this to them. So if someone is interested in what you've just shown them, if you've asked a lot of questions, you've really been listening to them, you know their pain points, you've been able to refine your presentation based on what you know about them, you've gotten the right third party lined up because you know all about them, then you're going to have it. It's going to be a little bit easier to do that follow up and do that close. You're going to be able to say, can you see yourself getting started with us? Or are you ready to get started as you nod your head? Are you ready to get started? And that's in a perfect world, right? <laughs> We're going to say, are you ready to get started? And they're going to say yes. And then we proceed. But that's not always what's going to happen. But this is something, again, if you do all those necessary steps at the beginning and really get to know the person you're speaking with and know their pain points, it will make the follow-up and the close that much easier for you. But if someone's not ready to get ready on the spot, then book a date and time at that moment so they know you're going to be circling back to follow up. Leave them with some homework. Maybe it's some of the information that Melody shared with us. Maybe it's um, a YouTube video. Maybe it's a presentation for them to look at. But leave them with homework, and then you're going to lead them to another exposure, to that follow-up. Don't leave the situation without having a time set for the next meeting. And never leave a prospect without a specific date and time for that next follow-up. And this is where you're gonna take control of that situation. Even if you open up your calendar on your phone or your paper calendar and there's nothing that you have for the next week, act like you're completely busy and let them know here's what I have and give them a couple dates and times that will work for you. That's going to show them that you are a leader and that you are a business owner and you are treating this like a business. Take control in that moment. Another great thing that I heard recently, something that's very easy, very duplicatable for your team is follow up Fridays. Fridays are your day when you're going to follow up. So you can say Friday is when I've been doing most of my follow up. So that would be a great day for me to check in with you. Here are the times that I have set, or here's some times that I have open. Let's get that set up, put on your calendar. That way I'm not bugging you because I know you don't have the time and nor do I. So you also though, if you have someone, you want to condense your follow-ups in a short amount of time. If you have someone that seems really intrigued, and has a lot of questions. And if someone's really intrigued in that moment and it is high noon in their life, they're going to lead you probably more than you're leading them. They're going to have questions or you're going to know exactly what to lead them to in those moments. So they've seen the ABC, you've gotten them on the third party call, and now it may be directing them to a Zoom that's taking place that week, or now maybe it's directing them to a home meeting that's taking place that week so they can see the culture, see the community, and really help them. Give it, you're giving them the opportunity to see how this could really change their life. So when you follow up, assume that they're ready to get started. I'm calling you back as I promised. I'm ready to take the next step. Is there anything you need to know before we get started? Just have that posture. This is something you'll want to practice as well. And if they're still not ready, then just simply book another date and time with them on the calendar. And don't leave this for more than a week. Have each follow-up be at least a week apart, um, at the most a week apart, especially if you know that they're truly interested. And after that, if, they, if you followed up again for that second time and if they're still saying that this isn't the right time for me and you continue to try and schedule something with them, it can be a waste of both of your times. So you want to focus on the people that are showing up and truly showing they want to work with you. Those are the people you want to be investing your time with. 
If someone is stringing you along before you start working with them, then there's probably a really good chance that they're going to continue doing that after you start working with them as well. I have one of my new distributors that after I showed everything to her, I could tell she was so intrigued, so excited. And it was a matter of every time I sat with her, I let her know exactly when I would be following up with her again. And then through communication, through asking the right questions, I knew exactly how I needed to follow up because I knew that now she was saving up to get a pack and to get into the business. And knowing that she was doing that, I started treating her like a distributor. So even though she hadn't signed up yet, my follow-up became, here are some trainings, here's my team website. Um, that She gave me permission to do that for her and that's what she wanted and that became part of the follow-up process for her. Now, if someone that you really believe in is a great prospect and you feel that there may come a time in their life when they are ready but they're just not ready yet, the timing is just off, then just let them know, hey, I understand now isn't the right time for you. I'm going to respect your time right now, but I really want to keep the door open for you because I think it would be incredible for us to work together. So do you mind if I keep you informed? You're just asking for their permission to keep following up. So from there, you're just going to drip on them about once a month. You can share new and exciting news. You can share new products. You can share things about the company's growth or incentives. And just checking in and saying, hey there, I wanted to follow up with you as I promised and keep you in the loop. And let this be a voice conversation. Let this be a voice text or a Facebook message um, that you do via voice. Let them hear your excitement. And then just say, let me know if you want to circle back around and have another conversation. Because we all know people change. We all know situations change. And it may be better for them. So if you have a really sharp prospect, keep dripping. And if you start to sense along the way that they're maybe just kind of stringing you along, then just back off and just ask yourself if this is someone you really even want to work with anyway. Because if, you're, if, you, feel, if you still feel strongly about them, then spread your follow-ups out more. Um, spread your follow-ups more with them. Maybe it's every two months if you were not hearing back. But also really just maintain that relationship. Relationships are huge for us inside Life Vantage and outside Life Vantage. So find them on social media. Make sure you keep engaging. And they're going to keep watching you in the meantime as well. You've planted that seed. They know what you're doing. And sometimes it takes people a year or longer to really get to that point where they're interested. So if you're engaging and keeping that friendship and that relationship intact, then when the timing's right for them, you want them to be that first person they think of. So remember, you want to work with people that are our pleasure to work with. You deserve that, and you do need people, but you don't need any one person. You're looking for people that are excited and motivated and influencers, right? People that are getting things done. You don't want to drag people through the mud, and you don't have to chase people or hound people. Remember, people are watching you, so give them something good to watch. Get them thinking, man, I... I I should say not, I should I should have said yes to that person or I, it's time for me to circle back with that person. They're doing some really big things. I also want to give you another example of someone I've been following up with. Um, he reached out to me and just right away, the way that he typed it, I knew that he was going to be starting um, in network marketing. So I just started the conversation and I really didn't even reply to what he said. I'm like, okay, tell me what you're going to be doing. What company are you looking at? He told me what he was looking at. This is going to be his first go round with network marketing. So I didn't start prospecting him. I truly, because he's a friend of mine, we go way back to college. We haven't had a lot of interactions since then, every once in a while through Facebook. I really just wanted to lead him and mentor him, knowing it would be his first time in network marketing. As his friend, I want to make sure he got the best education he could get about the industry to make the best decision that he could make. So it hasn't been about scripting anything for me with him. It's just been truly coming from my heart and letting him know that I'm probably not gonna stop bugging him. I told him, cause he's like, you're really relent relentless. And I'm like, I, this is your first go around. And I said, if you really wanna build a legacy building business with your family, I wanna make sure that you explore some options and that you truly know 
that you're getting into the right thing, that you can really make of it what you want to make of it. I'm like, so just give me one opportunity to put you in front of somebody that knows our comp plan well, because he said he loved the comp plan of the other company. It was one of the best he's ever had ever seen. I'm like, what if I told you I had one that was better? Would you want to take a look at it? If I, would you? Part of the invite process, right? Could also be part of the follow-up process. Um, and so he said yes. And now it's just kind of setting up that time. But I've already made it very clear with him that I'll be relentless. And we're having fun with that, right? Sometimes, too, if you send a message to somebody through Facebook Messenger, you can see when they read it. And so I've had opportunities, too, where it's been friends or people that I know um, a little more personally, or even if I don't, I'll have fun with it and say, one guy, I'm like, hey, look, Blondie, I know you saw my message. I know you heard my message. I wanted to check in again and just let me know either way because I don't want to keep bugging you. Your relationship is important to me. You just let me know yes or no if this is something you want to take a look at. And more often than not, they always get back to me because I'm taking the pressure off of them to just truly give me a yes or no so I can move on with my life <laughs> and continue to start prospecting and following up with other people. Okay, so the close. All right, the close. So a lot of people at the end of a presentation, they really just don't know what to do. So we end up asking, well, what did you think? And they're like, well, I don't really know. And we're like, well, okay, just call me, you know, if you have any questions. And we leave it way too open-ended. And that is not something we want to do today. We know the statistics, right? Over 165,000 people are joining a network marketing company every single week. And if people are going to join a company, you guys, they want to know they're joining someone that can really guide them and lead them. And so, again, remember, even if you don't feel that way, you know more than they do going into that situation. You've seen the ABC report. You've seen the stories. You know what we have. Hold tight to that. So the more you show up to trainings like this, the more you plug into Zoom presentations, the more equipped you're going to be with those tools to have that posture to let them know, like, look, this is really, really important. So what people are looking for in those moments where they're kind of like, I don't know, they're looking for leadership. They're looking for people to direct them. People will say yes to the opportunity, but more importantly, they're saying yes to you. So let them know that you are someone that they want to work with. You want to have good posture. And again, you want to have really good questions. So this is about them helping them with a problem in their life. And you won't know that problem unless you're asking questions. So be the best listener they've ever come across. If you act like a salesperson and you're too in your head and you're too worried about the next best thing to say and you're too caught up in the scripts, your brain's not going to shut up long enough for you to listen and really hear them. And if, you're, if you can shut that off and just hear them and hear what they're saying, let your heart lead. And they're going to hear that. And they're probably going to open up more to you than anyone else they've ever opened up to in their past few months of their life because a lot of people aren't being heard anymore through social media. People just want to be heard. So be that gift to them. Um, and if, again, if you act like a salesperson, you keep pitching and you aren't asking questions, but just doing all the talking, then you're going to have problems. So help them make a positive decision about our opportunity. Are these slides like really blowing you guys away? They're so awesome, right? <laughs> Anyway, but they're clear, right? And you get the information. So anyway, help them make a positive decision about their opportunity, um, about your opportunity. So rather than asking, what did you think? Instead ask, did it make sense to you? What did you like most about what you saw? Pretty exciting, isn't it? And after you ask all of these questions, wait. Even if it's really uncomfortable silence, wait for them to answer really let them process it, process this. Because sometimes people we're talking to and people we prospect that say they're open, they don't see this coming. Like they don't see all this amazing information in ABC report, the science, like it really blows them away and it can be a lot to process. So allow them the time to process the information that you're giving them. Another one, can you see how this could be an opportunity for you? And then there's always, on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being no interest to 10 being let's get started, 
where are you? And this, of course, is going to help guide you, help you guide them in the right direction to get more information if they need it, to maybe hear a third party, to maybe see some stories, get into another Zoom presentation, come to a home meeting to meet some more people. It's just a good reference, guys. And then we always have the four closing questions. So these are from the book GoPro by Eric Worre. This is something everyone should read. GoPro by Eric Worre. Um, if you do not have this, talk to your upline on where you can get that. And these are the questions Eric has taught us too. Number one, based on what you just saw, if you were to get started in this business on a part-time basis, about how much would you need to earn per month in order to make this business worth your time? And then wait. And a lot of times you're probably going to hear people say anywhere from like $300 up to the $2,000 mark. It's not always an extreme amount of money, but it's these, that amount of money that's going to bring peace of mind into their home. Number two, okay, let's say they say about $2,000 after you say that. Okay, about how many hours could you commit each week to develop that kind of income? And then wait. Because now they're really thinking about the level of commitment that they would give it or how much time would they really promote or devote to bringing that income into their family. The third one, how many months would you work those kind of hours in order to develop that kind of income? And this question, again, it really makes them think about their level of commitment and what are they willing to sacrifice and change in their life to really give up some things to make this happen. And then the fourth question, if I could show you how to develop an income of $2,000 per month, working 10 hours a week over the course of the next six months, would you be ready to get started? Now, probably a lot of times you're gonna have people say yes, and this is where you can break out that in the income disclosure statement. You can show them the incentives that we have with the pace setter, um, the influencer program currently, plug them into those resources where they can get that money back and build momentum and then start going through that blueprint. And then you're going to have people that are going to say no. And that's just, again, where you're going to start that follow-up process again, you know, and just be open about it. You know, if something's on your heart and you want to say it, say it. Just say, well, you know, if you're not ready at this point, I, I mean, I've gone through these questions. There is obviously money that you want to bring into your family. So maybe now just isn't the right time, but let's keep this door open and let's hope that this might be a seed that's planted for you so that maybe later down the road, you'll be ready to go. And when you are, I'll be here for you. And in the meantime, are you okay with me following up and just keeping you in the loop? So again, the key to all of this, you guys, is just really good questions and good posture and communication. And even with the good questions, don't overthink the questions. Like again, we get into this business and suddenly we strip off, suddenly we put on a badge that says, I'm now a distributor and we forget who we are and we, come, we become so robotic in it. Let go of that. Don't forget who you are as you come into this and be that person. Allow yourself to build those relationships to be the most influential person that anyone's ever met in their life because they truly took the time out to listen to them and feel their heart and help guide them and change their life in a way that they never thought possible. That's the most beautiful thing here with the follow-up and close is, again, a lot of times people don't see us coming and they don't know that there's another opportunity out there for them. So we can kind of blindside with kind of blindside them with that. And we just want to be that person that shows them what you thought life was going to be can be so much different for you. And in order for them to feel that you need to tell them that don't be so scripted with it. Like tell them this could change your life. You said you want an extra $2,000 a month. I know this could help you. Let's see what we can do to get you started. How do we get you started? Are you ready to get started? That's probably the best, the best question you could ask in a follow-up. So, all right, with that, thanks, John. All right, thanks, Tanya. Awesome, awesome stuff. And to finish our Blueprint training this morning, we have Pro9, Maria Williams. I mean, Maria has just been an amazing mentor and friend to me. She's been there to help me. And everyone that knows Maria, she know, you know that she is a great example of the system. 
She knows her stuff, and um, we're just so tickled to have her bring us home today and finish out. I'm going to read a little bit about her. Maria Williams is a wife, a mother, and an entrepreneur. She was born in Brazil and immigrated to the U.S. when she was a baby. Uh, she grew up in Massachusetts, where she uh, majored in, in business administration from Massachusetts with a minor in HR. Maria spent 20 years as a human resource manager in the manufacturing industry in, Ma in Massachusetts before moving to Arizona while starting a whole new career in network marketing, where she now has built a multi-million dollar home-based business. Maria works from the heart every day to help others achieve their dreams and goals of financial and freedom. When Maria is not doing one-on-one -on -one calls with her team or presenting this incredible opportunity, she spends a lot of time with her husband and her two sons. Maria, you're, you're awesome. We can't wait to hear what you have to say and uh, get your notes ready, too. We've got some amazing speakers today. This is just going to be great to have, have Maria. Take it away, Maria. Thank you, thank you. Wow, I am blown away by everyone. How blessed I feel with, oh my God, I'm getting emotional already. I can't even start. But you guys are just amazing. Um, you are true leaders and how blessed we are to have amazing, amazing people with their, you can tell by their hearts that no one's talking about, I, I was sitting here and nobody's talking about how much money they're making, where they're traveling to, how they bought a new house, how they bought a new car, right? It's not about that. If you listen to everyone, it was about their heart. It was about helping other people. And that's truly what I feel we have our hands on. We have such a huge gift, not only the gift of health. I'm getting so emotional here. Not only the gift of health, but the gift of blessing people's lives. Okay, give me a moment. <laughs> I remember when I met Joanne, she was, a re she was a widow, okay? Her husband had just passed away. She was $2,000 short of being able to retire and live. And she didn't know how she was going to do it, right? Now she's a pro seven and she's living a, the life, you know, dream life, being able to travel way, she's made way over that $2,000 that she needed because of what had happened in her family. And that's what I love about this business is we're giving people choices. We're giving people you know, opportunities to change their life a little bit or a lot. I mean, this is such an amazing gift that we have. And to share this gift with people, you have to invite people to look at the information. Let me tell you how I was invited to this, okay? This is how I was invited. My neighbor calls me, Carrie Williams, and she says, hey, the boys want to come over in the pool because it's summer, it's hot. I was always inviting her over. So she goes, hey, the boys want to come over in the pool. I have two boys. She has two boys. Sure, bring them over. Before she comes over, she sends me an email. Hey, um, I, I want, don't open this until I get to your house. But I want you to watch this. I'm like, okay, it's Carrie. I've known her for about a year. She's funny. She's, you know, she does crazy stuff. And I'm like, okay, she's probably got a funny video for me to watch. She gets to the house, we get the kids in the pool, and she shows me the ABC investigative report. She didn't have any speech, any script. She just said, hey, don't open this until I get there, and I want to watch this with you. And she showed me the ABC, and I was blown away by it. Look how simple that was. When I started inviting people, I called my friends. I'm, back, I'm from Massachusetts, so I would say, hey, I'm wicked excited about something, and I want you to watch it. You got to Yes. That's wicked. That was my thing. Are you, I'm wicked excited about something. You got 10 minutes. I want you to watch something. So you can do that with your close friends, right? Hey, I'm excited about something. I want you to watch it. So our goal, your goal should be is get people to look at the information. Get people to look at the ABC investigative report. Yes, I know it was in 2005, but that doesn't make a difference because it's still valid information. Nobody knows about nerf to activation. Very few people even know about oxidative stress and what that video says. It's a great summary and it's a great way to sift and sort through people. Honestly, 
I've only had two people that I can remember that flat out saw that and were not interested at all. And if that's them, that's okay. This is not for them. You're looking for the person like me, like Tanya, like Melody, like John, like Joanne, that saw that ABC and was like, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more about it. You know, now tell me more about it. All you're trying to do is pique their interest. We have tons of other videos that you can send after that. I like to send what is nutrigenomics, a two minute video. So I send that ABC and then I send the two minute what is nutrigenomics so they get a little bit bigger idea of what we have our hands on. And that's the still today, I do the same exact thing. I have it actually on my phone in my notes as a little script. I talked to a naturopathic doctor yesterday and that's what I sent him. I said, I'm gonna send you this. And just like Dr. Melody Rodardi said, I sent him a couple of studies the studies she mentioned, because I know he's a doctor who's going to want to look at the studies. And I'm just going to, um, let me mute someone here. That um, So I'm just going to, you know, share the information. And now we've got a meeting set up. And we're just going to have a conversation and see where it goes. So the invite can be very, very simple. Hey, I've got something. you got to watch this. you got 10 minutes. Be excited about just getting them to see the ABC. I've never had anybody ask me, is this network marketing? When I've asked them, hey, I want you to, to take a look at this investigative report, or I want you to take a look at this medical breakthrough video. I think you're going to be blown away. I've never had anyone ask me, is this network marketing? Ever. So sometimes people say, oh, they're asking me if it's network marketing. Well, what did you say to get them even to ask that? And there's nothing wrong with network marketing, but sometimes people have a preconceived notion, right? Don't like it and put a wall up and don't even talk to you. So I have found that my way around it is, have you heard of NRF2 activation? You know, and I listen to people. I listen to them. And when I hear what they say, then I connect it to what I want to show them. For example, if I'm talking to someone, if I meet someone, excuse me a second. If I meet someone and they're talking about their health issues, right? I listen and I say, hey, I think I've got something for you. Let me send you this ABC investigative report. This company has this medical breakthrough. Let me send you this information. What's your email? What's your phone number? I can meet a total stranger and get their phone number and say, I've got my phone with me. And I'm like, hey, what, based on what you just said, here's an invite. Based on what you just said, um, I've got something you've got to take a look at. Let me text you this ABC investigative report that I saw a couple of years back, and this has blown my mind, and this may or may not be for you. So I'm not going to give you a full script because I want you to be you, but think of may or may not be for you is a great way to get people to feel comfortable, right? They don't put this defensive wall up. You're not trying to sell something. You're trying to share some information with them. And I just did this yesterday with, um, at this naturopathic clinic that I was at. The, a nurse that was there asked me a question. And I said, you know, hey, let me send you some information on it. And boom, I got his email and I sent it to them. So it is so easy to do that, to send people the information. And then just like... Um, Tanya went through, you set up an appointment where you're going to follow up with them. I love the follow up Friday. That's a perfect way to remember every Friday, I'm going to follow up with people and set your time that you do that. So really listen to people. So if I'm talking to someone and now they're talking about work, right? They're talking about you know, hey, they're having layoffs again, or hey, they froze my pay, or hey, you know, our company is moving, or hey, I'm working so many hours, I feel underpaid, or I'm just tired of what I'm doing, I have no time for the kids, you know, we, we don't have enough to go on vacation, whatever it is, right? Now, they're not talking about a health issue, they're talking about money. This is the business side, the same exact thing. Hey, I might say, hey, John, based on what you just said, that you're tired of traveling six hours across the state of South Dakota, based on that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm involved with a company 
It's in the wellness industry, and they're bringing to market a medical breakthrough. Have you ever heard of NRF2 activation? John's going to say no. Great. Let me send you a video. Let me, you know, ABC came in to investigate this company, and um, they couldn't debunk it. So let me send you this 10-minute investigative report, and let's talk on Friday. John says, great. Send it over. Great. How do you want it? You want it text or you want it email? Some people do everything on their phone on text. Other people prefer an email. Ask the question. And, you know, I may say, you know, in my case, I may say, John, I've been involved in this for nine years. I've been able to build a multi-million dollar business. There's huge opportunity. I'd love to work with you in this. I love your personality. And I, I think we could rock this together. Let them know what's in it for them. What's in it for John? Let John, like in this case, I'm letting John know there's potential here, John. We could do this together. I love the person you are. I love your personality, right? So that makes John already feel like, hey, I'm not alone. I, we're going to do this together. And you know, what did you like about John? You know, what you, I mean, in this case, what did I like about John? What did you like about the person? Do they have a great personality? Do they have a great heart? Are they successful in what they do, right? So the same thing. Based on what you said to me, John, you're traveling six hours across the country. I've got a business opportunity that you maybe may or may not be interested in. Let me send you some information and let's talk on Friday. How simple is that, right? He's not feeling threatened. I haven't even mentioned network marketing, right? In case he doesn't like it. We're not even going there. I'm talking about a business opportunity. So if you can get really, really good at asking questions and listening to people and using what they say to show them you've got something for them to look at, this will just flow so, so easily, right? Because they're giving you their problem. They're giving you what their need is. They're giving you what they're uh, looking for and you have a solution and just present the solution. Do not be attached, right? Don't care if they get in or they don't. It's just if it's not for them, the next, the next. I talked to, in that first year when I got started, I probably talked to over 200 people in a span of four months. No kidding. I mean, I was home, so it was different. I would get the kids on the bus and I would be on the phone calling people, trying to set up a time, sending them the information, following up. So I probably talked to over 200 people. I was terrible at the beginning. I was trembling. I was shaking. I was nervous. But I tried to get, I, but I was excited about this product. I believed in what it can do. Um, I knew what it had done for my body, how I felt amazing, how I had family and friends that were feeling amazing. So I 100% believed in it. I had no doubt what this could, how this could help people. So I used that passion. You've got to be three things I like to talk about. Um, you've got to be hungry. Like, what is your why? What John talked about? You've got to be really, really hungry. Think of how would you like your life to look like in five years? Your life can change tremendously in five years. Look at the last five years of your life. Is it where you want it to be? Are you where you want it to be? So now you've been given this gift. And if you take this gift, and even if it's one person a day, like one person a day that you call and that you share the information with, and then you follow up, right? One person a day is 365 people in a year. In those 365 people, there's got to be someone who's looking like you were looking. And you don't need a million people. In those 200 people that I've talked to in the, in the first four months when I started this nine years ago, I found three people, three people, three main people. I found more, but three people who saw the vision, saw the opportunity, and decided to start talking to people and talking to people. Of the people that were on here today presenting, I didn't know any of these people. They were not personal distributors that I enrolled, but they were somebody that I enrolled that told them about it, who told them about it. And now they're here as pro sixes and pro sevens here, right? And so three people has turned into over 70,000 people in my organization. 
over, we do over $13 million a year in sales, almost 1.2 million a month in sales. We did last month, $1.2 million in sales on an average of $40 products. That's it. Now, did I, nine years ago, did I think that my life would be what it is today? Absolutely not. Did I have fear? Was I afraid? Of course. Did I have to step out of my comfort zone? Yes. Did I have to believe in myself that I could do this? Yes. But as the, as, as the years, you know, as the days went by and as, as time went by, I, all of that grew in me, right? It, my team started to grow. Um, I started to believe in myself. I started to believe in this industry. And, you know, there were the times I wanted to quit. Absolutely, there were times I wanted to quit. That first year, as Carrie Williams, was probably about five long conversations that we had over the phone or face-to-face -face conversations that I was like, this is hard. Like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. I don't know if I can be a leader. When it started to grow my team, then I got nervous. Like, how am I going to lead these people? I don't, you know, how am I going to be able to do this when I look at other leaders? But you know, the beauty of it is you keep growing, you keep learning, and you become a leader. I bet you the other five people that were on here speaking, they felt exactly the same way. How am I going to do this? How can I be a leader? But now look, of, look at them, listen to them. They were all amazing leaders. They've learned the story. They've learned how to build this business. And they want it, and they want to help other people. So that's what you have to dig into. You have to be hungry. You have to be passionate about this. As you can tell, I'm super passionate. I love what this is doing to people. Out of those 70,000 people in my organization, 90% are just customers. So <clears throat> you know how many people I have shown the product and the business opportunity to, and they just want it to be a customer. And that's wonderful because it creates a solid foundation for what we have our hands on. Let people be a customer. Keep in touch with them. They may change their mind. They may want to become a distributor a year later, two years later, three years later. I've had people reach out to me four years later. They've been a customer and say, hey, you know, my job is changing. I don't like what's happening. Tell me about your business. Are you really making that kind of money? Are you really having success? You know, and then it's a sit down conversation with them. And then the last thing is be grateful. Be grateful where you are along this journey, every part of this journey, be grateful. Even when you're not where you want to be and it's been a couple of years, be grateful that you even know about this opportunity. Be grateful that you have this product in your body. Be grateful that you still have time to keep talking to people and that you still can build this business, right? We are just getting started. We're all, like some people ask me all the time, you know, that know that I've done this for a while. Oh, is there still opportunity? Okay. We're only a $200 million company. We have a long way. Amway is a $12 billion company. And they've been around for 40 some years with soaps and lotions. And here we have a medical breakthrough. Do I think we have opportunity? Heck yes. Right? There are three. I'm going to talk just about the U.S. And I, I know we've got people from all around the world down here. But in the U.S., there are 300 million people. I'm a pro nine, and I only have 70,000 people in my organization. What's 70,000 out of 300 million? I have no clue. I'm not the numbers person. It's a drop in the, in the ocean. So you don't need a million people on your team to, you know, make big time income. To get to pro 10, honestly, if you had people on a $200 auto ship, you needed 25,000 people. So 25,000 people ordering $200 a month is a pro 10 business. That's pretty incredible. What's 25,000 people out of 300 million? That's how you have to think that we are only getting started. Nobody knows about this. So is there opportunity? Yes, yes, yes. And you want to be able to is go out there every day and share it with someone. If one to two people a day you can share this with, invite them to take a look at this. If you're nervous to talk to people, then from the GoPro book that Tanya mentioned is 
ask for their opinion, right? So Joanne Shear is a dietitian, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm not a medical professional. So uh, how I would approach her is I would say, you know, Joanne, you're very knowledgeable in nutrition and diet and diets and all of this. You know, I would love your opinion. I just got involved in something. Someone's just shown me something. Have you heard of NRF2 activation? Joanne would have said, no, she's never heard of it. I'm like, great. Can I send you some research? Can I send you some studies? Um, and can you, I'd love your opinion. Can we talk on Friday? Or when are you available, right? And so you send her the stuff and then you ask her for her opinion. I've done that where I'm asking someone for my opinion. Um, when, I started, um, um, when I started this business, I asked my neighbor who was in HR like I was, I asked her if I could go over and present. Because I'm like, look, I need to tweak my presentation. I'm getting really nervous. Can I come over and present? She goes, sure. And I told her, I started this new business and you know, I'd love your opinion. That's what I said to her. I went over, I had, at the time we had a flip chart. We did not even have a PowerPoint, an iPad to show it on, a phone, a computer. It was a flip chart. So I went through my flip chart presentation and by the end of it, you know, she gave me little points and stuff and she said, you know, hey, I want to get on that product. And I'm like, really? That was the, honestly, that was not even my intention. I just wanted her to, um, you know, look at you know, kind of criticize me on my, but I, on my presentation, but I asked for her opinion on it. So there's lots of different ways to get this information in front of people. So be hungry, be passionate, and be grateful for where you are. This month is March Madness. So let's take massive, massive action. Here's a challenge. I want you to go and talk to 60 people, right? I want you to show that ABC to 60 people. Don't be attached. All you're going to do is get people to watch it and then follow up with them. What did you like about it? Want more information? You can get on a Zoom. So simple as that. March Madness, 60 people go out there. The beauty of the March Madness that the company is having is that they can save $50, right? The starter kit is for free. So all they're paying for is really their product. And um, well, it's all product that they're paying for, which is pretty amazing. So dig into this. And um, I am so blessed and thankful for all of you today, um, allowing to be in on here, taking the time to learn um, and to be in part of this amazing team. Um, any questions that you have, reach up and up into your team and, and, and ask them if there's anything, if you want our slides or any information that was presented today. You know, keep it simple. Keep this simple. Leave from your heart. Know that what you have your hands on is blessing people. It could bless their health or it can bless their finance, right? It, there's two ways to bless people here. It depends on where they're at in their life and what they're looking for. So go out there with excitement, with passion in your heart. Bless people. What we have our hands on is huge, huge, huge. And what we've all created here, you can create. I have no doubt in my mind that if all of us here were to start today, fresh, new, we could recreate what we've done already because it's only gotten better. We've got more science. I love that Joanne said she was excited when we only had six studies, you know, and now we have 24 studies. Um, and Nerf 2 activation is getting so well known. So um, be passionate about this and go out there and share, share, share this with an open heart with people and see where it leads for you. I'm going to turn it back to John to kind of wrap it up and close. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Maria. Incredible uh, information. Just, uh, just want to say a huge thanks to all of our speakers today. Just a huge, great knowledge that we had. Um, this will be a blessing to your businesses. Like, like Maria said, too, if you have questions, reach out to your, uh, to your, uh, your mentors and the people you're working with and, uh, Anything you need from one of us, you know, let us know. We can get to you as well. And, and have a fantastic day and go get it. Thanks so much.